gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. People dying, kill me in the packing house. Even you have to. If I were to tell you the song was called Crazy in Love, well, who, who do you think sang it, Stu? Crazy in Love. People who are crazy in love. Your love's got me looking so crazy right now. Your I touch know. got me feeling so crazy, crazy right, right now. now. I know. Hoping you'll page me right now. Right now. Love's right now? got me looking so crazy. Your love's got me looking so crazy. Your love's got me looking so crazy. Your love. Who do you think did that? Take one guess at it. Your love. Nope. Uh, it was Beyonce and Jay Z. And guess what? You now have that recorded forever. Because welcome to Bunny Ears. Bam! We don't know um, you're recording. Bunny Ears. You, I'm not really good at that. Um, no, we no. were well, you were just <laughs> singing the song <laughs> actually, though. Actually, he has zero shame because he's just like no, like, yeah, he doesn't care. They just not fall under my wheelhouse. Welcome to Bunny and I'm unashamed. That didn't yeah. work out in my favor. Uh, <laughs> I'm Matt Cohen. <laughs> joined no, by you, idiot. Yeah, because right. I, I backed Stu up. That's all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. What the fuck, man? That's the fun he was part about that having song. <laughs> no, listen, I'm laughing with you, but I was backing him. Oh, having a it. podcast with three people is great because eventually somebody's gonna get ganged up on. It's fantastic. You just yeah jinxed yourself for the rest of the episode. Let's do it. Uh, Whatever you say, waspy motherfucker. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm Matt Cohen, joined by... Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. if you want, I guess. You, you, you are, always we, go you, first. You, you are joined by me. I am, and your name is... I am also here. Me Culkin. Me Culkin, and you are... Uh, exactly what Miller. Exactly what Miller. Exactly what Miller. We'll take it. Uh, you guys asked for more stew. We don't know why, but here he is. Yeah, stew. Oh my gosh. You have the hour. Do your thing. Oh, yeah, thank okay, you. Go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're taking off our uh, so headphones. Literature. And... <laughs> thank you. I'm glad all of you could join me today. We're going to be talking about books and people who write them. So the first book we will be talking about is 1984. All right, we're I back. believe that's we're, the year that just, Matthew was. Uh, oh, hey, we're back. Uh, we're back. We're Warren, back. we're sorry. Also, don't give out my fucking pertinent details. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're talking about all right, we're talking about Orwell. The uh, world was in chaos. We're talking about <laughs> communists everywhere. And uh, Matt Cohen was born. We're talking, <laughs> Matt Cohen was we're born. talking <laughs> books this week, folks. It's the literature episode. Yeah, literature. Literature. We know that uh, if you're listening to a podcast, that definitely means you love reading also. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sure this will be right up your alley. Yeah, all you readers out there, there you go. All you readers yeah. out all, there, all, all you guys that are in your cars right now, driving all you to work, bibliophiles, yeah, yeah. all you bibliophiles driving to work right now. I'm Bookworms. sure you're reading your book, bookworms, and listening to this right now. So we're gonna talk about books. We are sweet. So what do we like, like magazines or what? I mean, just like I think book. actual books. Oh no, B- book yeah. and, books and books. Do you adjacent guys love kind of books? Things. I do. I love books. Do you love books? I love book collections. I, I do read okay, but not as much as I should. And I think I'm like most of the <laughs> most of the, the pretty, world. You have a pretty impressive library, though. I do actually. It, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite impressive. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't know what a book reader really is. Like you know, I've had <laughs> I've had lady friends, including current ones, that uh, enjoy like books like. A lot, like sure. like I wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah, you're and they're reading a, a book. Is a book reader. Yeah, yeah like, and like yeah, like she's a you know completist and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't really have that kind of instinct. Uh, I will if a book really, really like draws me in and enthralls me. Sure, but otherwise, like yeah, I'm not like I've read a lot of the classics kind yep. of thing, yep. and I've read some really kind of weird kind of shit. But at the same time, like yeah, like. I wouldn't call myself a book reader just because I've known people who read books more than me. What about you, fuckers? What about you, Stu? Um, I you read, lie, where do you lie on books? I read quite a, quite a lot of books. Uh, you're supposed um, to say on the jackets. I, <laughs> but I'm I, I, I like that one. It's book humor for you. No, I, I actually made a deal with myself about a decade ago that I was going to try and make it my life's goal to read every classic novel I've ever heard of. Have you read Ulysses? I have read Ulysses. Really? Uh, Let's do well, it. the Odyssey. I've read the Odyssey, not uh, Ulysses. Yeah, yeah those sorry. are different. Those, those are, are different. very different. Could yeah, not sorry. be more different, my friend. Well, I mean, no, 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 no. These both start with a vowel. Sure. And they have a lot of L's <laughs> and Y's. One is written, written by an Irishman named James Joyce, and the other is written by Homer. Homer. Yeah, there you go. Homer. Homer. <laughs> um, where, where do you? So, what, what have you gotten through classic wise? Uh, right now, I'm on War and Peace. I read Anna Karenina. I've done Crime and Punishment. Those are like my Russian novels. Uh, Have you done Old Man in the Sea? Or I, like... The Old Man in the Sea was actually the first book I ever read in German. 
Wow. So wow. yeah, I, I've read obnoxious. The Old Man in the Sea. Yeah. So shut up. Get nice uh, mustache, You mean the bro. second book after Mein Kampf? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not read Mein Kampf. I love, we're not forgetting, Germany. <laughs> we love you, but we're not forgetting. Matt, I love how you rag on Stu on the podcast. <laughs> it's great. You really, like there's certain times where I'm like, go after him, don't you? <laughs> 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 podcast gold, baby. <laughs> that fake conflict. Me and Stu love each other. He, so watched, me, he watched me Stu, play Far Cry Stu, 5 last night. Stu is like hour. living He's with enjoyable. you right now. So there you go. He does. Uh, <laughs> guests of the Bunny Artist Podcast stay at Matt Cohen's house. <laughs> Matt Cohen's house. The one with the Japanese room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, which address is five? No, no never. No, no, no. Yeah, five, no five, the address five. is five. <laughs> five, five, five. <laughs> Boogie five, Woogie Avenue. Five, uh, Second Street. Be fake. Yeah. Um, where class? I see. I did that too, man. I like. Here's my thing on books. Right. I love books. It's always yeah. been like my main. If I had a superpower, it would be reading. Okay. And I've been like told that my whole That's life. That's a really lame superpower. It I is. Just... It is, but it's it's real though. I'll take a healing factor or super strength. <laughs> like, you know, but like a cool reading. Okay. So books have always been my main thing. Reading and writing was always like any person who ever, especially when I was younger, before I became such a stoner, uh, they were, I was like, you were destined to do something with books, as it were, or, or with the written word. So my entire life, I have been obsessed with books. And it was a quick, um, I think I've touched on this in another show, but like, I was born into a house where my mom had every Stephen King book ever written. Okay. And I know you're a Stephen King guy. Huge. I mean, yeah. so you were talking about completionists, right? Like, I've read every Stephen King book ever written. Did you ever take a stand against that? Uh, I've took the unabridged version. Buddy. Oh, there you go. Unabridged. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'd say, like, I am a, compl- I'm a huge completionist, right? So I've read, like, every Stephen King book ever written, uh, every Dostoevsky book ever written. I'm a huge Dostoevsky fan. I've read every all the Dickens uh, hmm. There is out there, um, um, and then there's just like authors I dig, like Neil Gaiman and Will Self, and like so, ch- I, I read a lot of Chuck Palahniuk before that became gross. I'm I'm laughing because I actually I read Crime and Punishment and loved it, but thought it was a little bit long winded, and then started reading the Brothers Karamazov, and I was like, oh yeah, it's Dostoevsky, and I like after a hundred pages, I was like, I just can't do this. I'm crazy. Yeah, I give <laughs> up. <laughs> crazy. Uh, let's do this real quick. Like, what are your favorite books ever ri- written, guys? Um, I have a top three if you want me to go first. Oh, it, yeah, yeah, please. I have a top have, five. You, you obviously ahead. have a list. Uh, okay. I do. Uh, I would, I, in no ranking order, but I, uh, I, I love Crime and Punishment. Yep. Uh, I love Don Quixote. Okay. Um, I love The Stand by Stephen King. Okay. Uh, I love, uh, I'm a huge Mark Twain fan, and my favorite Twain is a book called The Idiots Abroad. Okay. Or A Pilgrim's uh, Passage, I believe, which is sure. like a travelogue. Like, if you guys haven't read, Warren, you might be going, Mark Twain, the fucking Huckleberry Finn guy? Yes, but also, uh, awesome dude and like a great satirist and satirist. And he's a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court was great. He wrote, yeah, he, was the, he was the first stand up comic. I mean, like, yeah, he, he, yeah, he would go around doing lectures, which were just like hour long. Him, just, just he was tweeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. He's doing like he's Kevin Smith shit, like, like one liners, yeah, yeah, yeah. one liners, and, and an evening with Mark Twain. Um, so there's two. There's one called Pilgrim's Progress, which is, which is a travel book in the Americas. But fuck that. The Idiots Abroad is about Mark Twain and his other like rich, weird Southerner friends going to like Europe and Israel and Egypt, but in the year like I don't know, nineteen whatever. So, like, it's a travel book written in a time where, as a white rich person, you could fucking do anything you wanted anywhere in the world. They, they are people, you could, you could pay money to be uh, hoisted up the pyramid on a man's back. Huh. You, they, were, they were ripping off pieces of wall at every temple they went to and bringing it home. Like, it's just a book about people, like, savaging their way through the, earth, the world, and it's really, really funny and, and great. So there's my twain. Uh, so, you, so, you, so you like savages. I do, I do like the savages. That's mm-hmm. my twain recommendation. And then I would also give them for my fifth to round it out, uh, a book called uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by a woman named Susanna Clark. Uh, it's a book about rival magicians. It was made into like a BBC miniseries a few years back. Uh, it's like 950 pages and it's fucking awesome. She never wrote another book, which is a bummer for me. Hmm. And there's our book talk. Stu? Yeah. Uh, okay. For me, top five... Uh, I do the, my number one. I'll, I'll come to last, but uh, the other ones are not in any. So go backwards. Order. All right. Yeah. Uh, are we doing I, five or doing three? Uh, I'm going to do we five. We both round up with yeah. five, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would definitely put Frankenstein up there. I loved Mary Shelley's Frankenstein when I read that uh, junior year of high school, and just thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I also the year before that I read A Prayer for Owen Me Owen Meany by John Irving which I also thought was pretty amazing. I mean, I kept going, oh, you could end the story here. You could end the story here. You could end the story here. And then when they did end the story, I was like, wow, that was really good. Um, 
I would put uh, 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 the Once and Future King. Sure. Which I actually was inspired to read that because of X Men Two. Okay. They mentioned it <laughs> twice, and I was like, I got to find out what this is about. And it's amazing. It I I didn't I wasn't ready for it to be the tale of King Arthur. Um, but that's what it was. And it's I, like the American ver. It's like the English version of. It's yeah, like the yeah. World War II version. Oh, the of, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Le, Lamour to Arthur. It was. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're correcting me. Thank it was you. sweet. It was really right. good. Um, and uh, uh, the Master and Margarita, which is by- Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> by Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, yes. I heard Jimmy Margarita. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by Bogakov, okay. and uh, I actually went to the Master and Margarita Museum in Moscow. And that was pretty sweet. Actually, Matt, I feel like you would love that more than anybody else. It's all about Satan coming to... Wait, what's Wait, it called? Start from the top. <laughs> it's called The Master and Margarita. Am I going to love it? You're going to love it. Is it a Russian... It. Is it like in the 18th, 19th century Russian? It is uh, 20th century Russian. Okay. Um, and it is Satan coming to communist Russia to throw his century ball... And he has to take a bride, and I'm in it. I'm you in just it. meet in everybody it. from hell I'm who in celebrates this ball. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and then my favorite one uh, is Animal Farm, which I read in eighth grade. I absolutely, I, I was still of the impression at that age that every book has a happy ending. And that one did not. <laughs> and it is a fantasy tale. I mean, it really is. Yeah. It's, it has talking pigs. Yeah. And, and talking like dogs and actually yeah, I don't horses. Think dogs, but horses and ponies. No, the dogs are there. They, they are. I don't know that they talk. I think they just bark. No, no. <laughs> um, they're the secret police. Is they what they are. are. They are. Yeah, they're the KGB. KGB. They're the Gestapo. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and I remember reading it going, he's got to wrap this up. I only have two pages left and the pigs are still in control. What are we going to do? <laughs> and like, and when it ended, I was like, you got to be kidding That's me. when you learned about the that's, frailty of life. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh my. And then I think like a year later, I started studying uh, communist Russia. And I was like, oh, this book was about that. So at this point, <laughs> actually, I what I was in eighth grade. Give me give me a break. At this yeah, point, yeah. I bought a a first edition, first printing of uh, of Animal Farm nice. that I treasure. I have so. uh, I have one of those. I, uh, I have um, I'm a big Poe guy. Nice. And my favorite poem of all time is something called The Conqueror Worm. And I don't know that one. I've heard of it, but I don't know. It ends the with uh, deets, deets. It, it ends with uh, all the angels all pallid and wan, uprising, unveiling a firm that the play is the tragedy man and its hero, the conqueror worm. It's basically about like I'm gonna attest right now, Warren, he did not look that up. Yeah, he yeah. I can do, I just can do the that. Low that tis a gallon. Then. Low tis a gallonite. Uh I can do the whole play. <laughs> um but regardless, I bought the uh uh, the literary magazine at first. I have a first edition, first printing of that poem from like a random literary magazine. Nice. Uh, nice. Because I love that poem so much. Um, what about you, Kolke? Um, Okay. I mean, uh, Animal Farm is on my list. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. You know, it was... I've I was, never read Animal Farm, guys. Oh, my... Uh, I know it's like allegory with like talking it's like animals. It's like 100 pages. It'll take you like an hour. Yeah, it's pretty light. Here's the thing is that like when I was working on sets and all kind of stuff... Uh, we always had to read things or she always had to make sure my tutor would always make sure that I read things. And so to, for me to take a break, she would read things to me and okay. she read me animal farm. She was the first audible.com. Yes. <laughs> it was Shout a, out to maybe sponsor. It was, it was a book on tape. She could tell when I had enough of the day kind of thing. Right. Like just like, not just saying it, but actually like she would know it. Then boom, she'd go just lay down close your eyes and I'll read you animal farm. And, you know, the thing that parents are supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Animal Farm's on there. It's a special place in my heart. Uh, um, uh, Outsiders. Yeah. Okay. S.E. Hinton. Yes, S.E. Hinton. You know, yeah. Pony Boy. Yeah, Pony Boy and Soda Pop. You know, yeah. You'll, whole, appreciate, kind of, you'll appreciate this. Dairy, and, dairy and deli. And this isn't, daily. <laughs> this isn't giving you any vital info, but uh, when I mix this podcast, I, there's always a temp version. And then once it's the version I want to upload, I rename it uh, uh, Pony Boy. Nice. That became my like, yeah. So yeah, that's a little bunny ears. Uh, yeah, was, outsiders connection. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's because it, it, your ponytail, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, yes. my ponytail. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, um, so I had a weird affection, I guess. That was that like seventh, eighth grade kind of thing. Boy gangs. Yeah, you wanted to wear a leather jacket and have a switchblade. Like yeah, boom. Like yeah. So I have a weird affection. Um, then I'll go with uh, nine stories. I'm, uh, a, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, Salinger, right? Salinger. I'm a okay. huge Salinger fan. Um, 
it's one of those things where I'm like, sometimes I'm asked like, shout out to JD Salinger. You want to do the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sal- yeah JD Salinger. Yeah. He does a lot of podcasts. You guys. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We don't want to water this down. Uh, um, love it. Love it. Love it. Like it's one of those things where I've heard him asked like, who's your favorite writer or painter? I'm kind of always like, uh, it's going to be Salinger and Picasso. Like that kind of thing. Sure. Where they feel like easy answers. Like, you know, um, Number two is Movable Feast. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's Hemingway. That's Hemingway. Oh, okay. It's about his time in uh, in Paris uh, when he was in his like mid-late 20s kind of thing, mm-hmm. living with his wife. And all right. I have a story that will take about like two or three minutes. But, okay. So uh, I had a friend of mine, a British no. friend of mine. No. Sorry, no. How dare you? <laughs> I had a British friend of mine. He told me, he said, you should buy a Movable Feast. I had just moved to Paris. This is like in 13. So this is like five years ago. Um, so I'm sitting in a cafe in a, a place to uh, San Marco or whatever. Um, and they say, uh, they say, uh, oh, like, you know, so in my head I go, oh, well, uh, uh, Shakespeare and Company. It's just a couple blocks from here. And they always sell English language books. It's a thing. So I'm eating oysters, drinking wine. I go, oh, I'll buy a movable feast. So boom, do that. I walk down there. I get the book. And so I start, I said, like, um, I should read it somewhere, like, nice. And so I'll, I'll go to uh, Park Luxembourg, which is, like, a good half kilometer, like, south kind of thing. So I walk along the river for a while, and I'm thinking, like, you know, I actually don't really like this part of the river. It's very touristy, very this, that. But then finally I get off of that, and then I walk down to, um, you know, uh, Park du Luxembourg, and I sit down and start reading. First chapter is about how he's sitting in a, in a cafe in place, you know, then so, do some alcohol. Uh, talking about, you know, yeah, talking about, Love it. Uh, dude, Michelle, Michelle, uh, talking about, uh, you know, how he wants to like, you know, like, just like he's writing and just eating oysters, drinking wine. Exactly what I just did. Uh, the next chapter is about him walking home. He's walking along the quays of the Seine. Yeah. And how he, um, he doesn't like this K or that K. This one's too busy, but I like this one. Talks about the sawmills, all kind of thing. Then the next chapter is about him walking to uh, Gertrude Stein's house and how she goes to Park Luxembourg. And I'm sitting in Park Luxembourg at that very moment going, okay, this is a Goucher, man. Like, this is a stand-by-me Goucher. Like, this is so freaking weird. Truman and Show. And I'll give you one further, Warren. Have you ever seen Macaulay Culkin and Ernest Hemingway in the same place at the same time? Right? No shit. Papa? Well, then, then, so I finished that chapter, and then the next chapter is titled Shakespeare and Company, where I actually physically bought the book. Wow. So I just slapped the book closed. I went, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Uh, it made me angry and elated, you know, I mean, it made me angry because it was like, nothing I do is original, and then also at the same time, I'm I'm happy because I'm doing things that other great people have done. But at the same time, this shit like was just like, that's like fine, I don't... Fuck you, book. Cha- <laughs> chapter five was called How to Be in Home Alone. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, yeah. How to Get Killed by Bees. Hemingway. <laughs> that, Stealing your fucking gimmick, man. That's Ooh. one of the things that I love about reading is when you read a book that happens to be in the setting that you are currently in. Yeah, like, yeah. right. I, I read, not knowing much about it, I read Dante's Inferno. When you were in hell. And I happened to be like... <laughs> I happened to be next to a uh, next to a fire, and I was like, and it, all the lights were off in the room. Did you help? And I was just like, I kept see, like, I kept reading. Why this were book. you reading next to a fire? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because that's what wasps do. <laughs> oh, me and Mac both thought like building being burned. Yeah. Down. Aren't, aren't you a fire? Aren't you a fireman? <laughs> <laughs> I am, but this was actually in a fireplace. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I was reading it by just firelight, and it just made the book that much more like the essence of the book just came out. Yeah, of course, dude. Yeah. Or like I read uh, oh, Atlas and- Shrugged on a train on the Trans Siberian Railroad, and that book is about a you know a, well, a yeah, railroad no, tell me more I read about Alice Shrugs. I read the beach in Thailand <laughs> when I was in Thailand I read the beach and I was like oh this is a mistake this shit's scary I don't want this to happen to me <laughs> for real though um, but uh, like, I, I was just next to a fire recently I was like whatever I do I don't want to read next to this <laughs> um, <laughs> all, uh, number one number one oh, yeah, please, yeah, yeah. please I think I know uh, what it ca- is Catcher in the Rye of course it's Catcher right, in the Rye of course I'm that guy the off disgust right. I think that is our fourth Catcher episode right? yeah, it's, yeah right? it's come up before yeah exactly Matt hates it there you go. It's you know my one. feelings on it. He doesn't have sex with that prostitute, and I feel like it's a big waste. But <laughs> whatever. Whatever. That's your Holden, takeaway. That's, whatever. Whatever. Holden, your, good for you. That's your takeaway. You really from learned it. a lot, I bet. Go <laughs> go back home and be like, Mom and Dad, I've seen the big city, and here's what I got to say. I don't know. Don't sleep with the prostitutes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
Do people are weird? I don't know. I'm going to go no, back to being a no, kid. No, not don't, haven't. Because he haven't goes, slept with the prostitutes. He goes back to being a kid, right? <laughs> Probably at the end. Yeah, of course, sorta. yeah. Yeah, he, no, so she ends up, you know, he, apparently, I don't know, he might end up in a hospital or something like that. Is there like yeah. a sequel, an unofficial sequel to Catch on the Ride? There no. actually is, actually. Is there? Yes. Really? All right, I'll be the ganged up one here. Really? What was it? Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm I'm the ganged up one. Uh, uh, um, no, it, it, there there are like a couple of like fanfic, like, like okay. sequels. Okay, but where he doesn't... like where he fucks Batman or something. <laughs> yes. No, him and Spock. It's yeah, him yeah, and Spock. It's every fanfic ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go to Hogwarts and then everyone has sex. Like, uh, but yes, no. If if we want to Google it, which we're not going to, uh, but you kids can Google it. And I'm telling you, there actually are like sequels that are like, yeah, fan made and also like semi fan made. You know. You, okay. Um, make up your mind. Yeah, I don't know if that counts if Salinger didn't do it. Well, Salinger didn't do a lot, but then he also did do a lot. <laughs> so I was never, I was never a Salinger guy. I was a huge Hemingway guy, and only because like he's a fucking dick, right? Yeah, yeah. no, he's a dude, bro. We talked really about he's the most manly yeah, yeah. fucking writer ever. Like, and yeah. so like so much so that still, uh, still a girlfriend. We just got back okay. from uh, New Orleans, uh, uh, the Bunny Ears crew here, and on the way down, I read um, Factotum by Charles Bukowski, okay. and I'd never read any Bukowski before. And Bukowski's like Hemingway, but more fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. really well written, and it and it reminded me of Hemingway in terms of like structure and like not a lot of adjectives and very descriptive, but also like describing horrific illegal acts. Fuck. Wait, 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 wait. It wasn't distra- It wasn't uh, descriptive, but it didn't have a lot of adjectives. It. <laughs> hmm. It was descriptive, I said. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know. But it didn't have a lot of adjectives. But how do you describe things? How did uh, it, it's adjectives? It's, <laughs> um, <laughs> Professor Mack, not flowery adjectives. So think of Hemingway. Dude, no, Everything was good. Uh, it was me. good wood. Listen, and the wood I've read hot. so much fucking Henry. Miller. Hemingway is good and hot, and you know what I mean. Like exactly. Yeah. No. Exactly. Whereas, like, like a Henry Miller is like, yeah. No, his his. His paragraphs or are flowery. like three yeah, yeah. pages long, uh, but yes, no. Mamet is a also, very uh, utilitarian I mean, writer. Ad- adjectives are descriptors. I mean, by their very nature, <laughs> something <laughs> could be a noun with a Y on it. You could be New Yorky. Well, th- that would be an <laughs> adverb if it has an L Y. Oh, he's all about adverbs. Then man. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That Bukowski's all, right. all about adverbs. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, There's yeah. something. There. There was something to like, and I know you could appreciate this. There was always something to me in the, like the pose and the. Uh, and like the depraved, there was always an image in me of like a writer should be a man drunk at a bar, chain smoking cigarettes, with like no one in his life and completely miserable. <laughs> but there is something to that. I feel Matt, like right? what, what I, would I, you I say like, your feel, profession is? Yeah, I feel. I feel like. I feel like I meet <laughs> half of that. Writer. I feel like I make meet half of that criteria. Isn't yeah. there? Well, this is a larger <laughs> conversation, but there's always been a weird. I used to say when I was younger, and I don't believe it anymore. But I, when I was a teenager and a real fucking douchebag, I'd be like, I don't understand how anyone happy can make good art. Uh, yeah, I mean that—that that is the actually that's the romanticized version of what art is. Yeah, yeah. That, but I don't think that's necessarily that, true you, anymore. You have to be a tortured artist, yes, to make things that are great. That's such a bummer, and it also just like kills you, young man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I really think like Tom Hanks is probably a happy, dude. He makes a lot of shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, man, like, you know, that whole tortured fucking artist thing, I think is, is a lot of, I, look, I think there's some truth to it, but I also think it's dudes who want an excuse to drink and chain smoke. Uh, yeah. Because I've mean, been there, it becomes a crutch, I feel like. No, it, it's a little bit also of just this, and you guys can't see it, I'm pointing at my head, this is very, very loud sometimes. Yes. Yeah. It's just very, very loud. You, gotta, you can't shut it up. Someone recently used the phrase dulling their shine. Yeah, and I liked that. Yeah, because it was like, yo, man, sometimes you shine too fucking bright. Yeah, no, it, it blinds you. It it's blinds not sustainable, you. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, and like, yeah, sometimes you hear the voices in your head that, like, you know, not in the schizophrenic kind of way, but just like, yeah, sure. Like, what about wakes the... you up in the middle of the night because um, don't forget to do this, 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 this. Uh, and this. Think of all the author, authors that like burnt out, or, or what about the, the Confederacy of Dunces, Confederacy of Dunces guy, right? Yep. yep. Or uh, uh, or uh, 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 Oscar Wilde, sure, uh, 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 Monk, uh, uh, Van Gogh. I mean, you name yeah, them. Picasso, like, Poe. I mean, Poe spent his entire know, life. But, but Picasso made it. Like Picasso made it into his fucking 80s. Fucking Kafka. Yeah. You guys know the deal with Kafka? I'll give it. And Incre- I might yeah, not hear. be one hundred percent on this, but Franz Kafka, you know the uh, uh, the Czech uh, existentialist author who wrote like Metamorphosis. Yeah, I know, I, yeah, yeah right? yes, yes. He was like a file clerk his whole life and like obsessively. 
almost maddeningly wrote at night when he, he got home. He was the guy home. who stared at you from his other cubicle and you didn't like it? Yeah. <laughs> and little did you know that that guy was going home every night and writing to like the wee hours of the morning and never showed a single person in his entire life anything he wrote. And then when he died, so I, I might be a way off base on this, but someone found all of Kafka's work and they were like, what the fuck? He was just doing this for him. Yeah. That's the trippy thing on Kafka. Yeah. Can you imagine you've got that much of it in you that you've got to get it out there just for you even? Yeah. I mean, look at, look at writing uh, can be a sickness. Look, uh, Lovecraft. Sure. Uh, uh, he actually was published in his lifetime. Yeah, uh, he's fucking anti-Semite too, but whatever, everyone is. Well, I'm just, well, <laughs> but there's a similarity in, like in the fact that a lot of his stuff was like kind of posthumous. Yeah, that kind of or thing. just that fever pitch of like madness writing. I mean, robots. A Movable Feast, the freaking, uh, you, know, you know, that Hemingway, that was posthumous. Speaking of A Movable Feast, a good recommendation, Warren, um, uh, kind of a counterpoint to it is Orwell's, going back to uh, the opening, uh, uh, down and out in uh, Paris, and, Paris London. and London. Did, did I tell you about that or no? No, no I, we I've, both I just, I've just read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I read that when I was twenty, it's living great. in Paris yeah, in London, great. and like, yeah. it's him like working in different restaurants and like hotels and just kind of bumming. Oh yeah, around. No, pick, pick, picking up cigarette butts yep, from yep. the street to, so he can smoke them and stuff. Like, yeah. I love travel. I love travel logs. Like I love. So well, it was before he went crazy too. Yes. It, I mean, it really does feel like an article from the turn it, of the it century. Really, it's great. It's really great. It's what, cool. It's cool. When did he go crazy? And when? When? Before before he wrote in 1984, oh, before he thought Big Brother was fucking chasing him. Or yeah, 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 fair enough. Uh, uh, speaking of other kind of madcap authors, how are you guys on Hunter S. Thompson? I haven't read any of his stuff. No, no. Uh, I have. I've actually like. I just started getting into him. I, I think I, you would dig him, Mac. Particularly, I'm going from his articles and sure. working my way forward. Well, that's the way you do it. I mean, um, uh, like his Rolling Stone stuff and everything. Everyone like, goes know. to Down and Out, right? I mean, excuse me, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah, but there's yeah. also um, uh, Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail, which mm-hmm. is the the Barry Gold Rosewater or Goldwater or what? Yeah, Goldwater. Barry Goldwater. Uh, and it's fucking fascinating, like because he starts as a straight journalist and then it's if you read him chronologically, it's just a slow slow uh, descent into de- 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 madness. Slow yeah, burn into madness. <laughs> so descent, slow descent to the point where he shot his own face off with a shotgun and then had his wife shoot his ashes out of a cannon. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much how under she something. Legit, yeah. Yeah. She was in the room with that him. That is the end game of she madness. Was like, she's like, oh, I'm gonna go get a glass of lemonade. He's like, alright, cool. And the second she left the room, he was like, shotgun to face! You know what I mean? Like, it, there, there is something to... to you think it, a pistol would have done it, too. <laughs> not Hunter. Not for, not for Hunter. Not for Hunter, dude. You know what I mean? Because his brain was really loud. He had to go big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think a lot of my favorite authors are that way. We're just giant, larger-than-life personalities, you know? Yeah. I've gotten some Hunter S. Thompson, like, especially when we were in Thailand kind of thing. We're just kind of just like, okay, you're being a little too Hunter right now. <laughs> I like to call it uh, Max Swagger. Yeah, Max Swagger. Captain Max Swagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> Captain Max Swagger. You know, yeah. But to be fair, Johnny Depp literally appropriated all of Hunter's mannerisms after that movie. Yes. If you <laughs> look at the Johnny Depp career, yeah, he was, I, he was I, doing like Nick of Time and like normal shit, and then he did Fear and Loathing, and all of a sudden he's like the fucking weirdest guy on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like we know you're from Kentucky. Why are you talking like that? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yes, I talk like this. Ah, I've always talked like this. Everyone in Kentucky talks like this. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Your Johnny Depp impressions are <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> shout out to Johnny Depp. Oh, he's done some weird shit in the last couple of years. Maybe not shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag what wanna, happened to Johnny Depp? I do want to see that movie. <laughs> he's Grindelwald. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Grindelwald's Revenge or whatever yes. it's called. In, in oh, yeah. You guys, oh, you guys are talking to uh, Harry Fantastic, Potter. Fantastic yeah. Beast, baby. Wow, yeah, there you go. Shout out to Dan Fogler. Yeah, Fogler, what's up, bro? What up, bro? Yeah. We'll hook up eventually. Hit fist bump. Yeah, we've been trying we've been trying to get him on the show for a minute. We're always we're skipping cities with the guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> speaking of literature, uh I know me and Stu are big on Harry Potter. <laughs> speaking of yes. literature. Whoa, went to Harry Potter. I know, I like it. I like uh, it. Have you have you indulged, Mr. Culkin? No. <laughs> Don't say it like that. Do, do you I was ha- just saying about Twitter too. Do, so do, whatever. do you have multiple copies of Harry Potter books in your apartment? Yeah, yeah. I all sort, are uh, they all uh, sorts of stuff? You know what that is? That's that's a testament to how many ex girlfriends I've had. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so he, 
They all try and give you yeah. a copy. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'll, you got to try this. I'll, yeah, I'll put that in the back and I'll see if I get to it. Yeah, yeah. All, <laughs> all you P words. Like, we, yeah. re- <laughs> we revealed earlier that uh, Stu is staying at uh, a Camel Toad Manor while he's in town. And off times uh, around nine o'clock at night, me and Stu would get to a two hour long Harry Potter conversation for no reason. Yeah, I would say so. What was our most recent one? Oh, last night. Literally, I was reading you as you were doing your taxes. I was reading you the Pottermore descriptions of all the different schools. That's true. That's true. Thank you for that. Castle of Bruxo uh, in Brazil, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys know what your Patronus is? Uh, I mean, you can no, pick I'm your Patronus. No, you can't. Like, you have to do a test on the website. Um, on look, Potter I Mark. have not read these books, and I have a Patronus. <laughs> I can't so, remember. Come on. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely Slytherin. I can't remember my Patronus right now, I'll be honest. No, you have to do a Q&A, man. Uh, what I, I, what I, house my, were you? My, my, I'm, I'm a, I'm a ma- uh, No, no. I'm, I'm Gryffindor, and I'm a, and I'm a Mastiff. I don't believe that you're Gryffindor. Look, at the end of the day, I, I'm heroic. <laughs> I'm heroic. Not at the end of the day. I, at all Somewhere times around the midday, day. about 2.30. Yeah, no, it's like, yeah, if I play RPGs, I always go Paragon. I always go Blue. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to get into my Pottermore account while we talk to find my Patron. Uh, no, it, it takes more than a minute. Actually, one of no, the- No, qu- I did it already. I want to see if it's like available. Like. Yeah, one of the questions, I like, I, it was taking a while to answer because I didn't know what I wanted in my multiple choice, and it yep. just faded away. Do you even know what a Patron- And so a non-answer is an answer on Pottermore. Oh, no kidding. So I actually kind of want to run experiments of what it's like if you just don't answer any of the questions. I, You know, I've legitimately, I have read each of those books at least three to four times- mm-hmm. And I've never wow. gone to Pottermore. I'm into my and, Pottermore. And what's your girlfriend feel about that? Guys, th- th- all of them have encouraged it. <laughs> yeah, I, got big, sure. I, I got big news for you. I got big news for you, and I remember now. And it makes all the sense in the world. Slytherin, my Patronus, the Sly Fox. Who right. is Sly My Patronus fox. is a fox. Okay. And I'm, so down, I'm down with that. It's because you're so handsome. Thank you, buddy. You're a Sly Fox. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> that's what it does. Yep. I had to look. Here's welcome. Matt. I had to look it up. Matt, welcome to your personal Pottermore page. And that's all you're going to hear because it's private information. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. What's, what's your password, bro? <laughs> Shh. Draco Malfoy for life. Uh, uh, more literature. 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 We're, we're, we're losing. We're losing. We're, we're not. We're, we're talking, talking Harry Potter. Potter. I know we're not. We're talking Harry Potter. Uh, have you guys ever done? <laughs> no, have you no, guys a Harry Potter? Have episode. you done any other YA stuff? Because like after Potter, no. young adult that stands for you. <laughs> uh, so like I did the Hunger Games. Yeah, I stay out of that section. Did you do the Hunger and, Games? Did you Ender's uh, Game? I did not do the Hunger Games. Ender's Game. I did not do Ender's Game either. That was before my uh, Orson Scott card. Yes. Is that Ender's Game? Yeah. Um, I never yeah. read it. Yeah. No. I mean. Just uh, I I know a lot about him. About Orson Scott this Card. Book. Yeah. What What do you know about him? Just lots of <laughs> no, no, no. no anti gay kind of stuff oh, that's really? going on. Uh, you know. Gay. How about this? How about hey audience Warren, uh, check out his Twitter account, and then all of a sudden you'll not like his yeah, books anymore. Yeah, I mean that kind of happened to me. Twitter <laughs> like and not not even a left right kind of thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's actually like the guy actually kind of got a little gross. Dude, Twitter like. Twitter ruined a, social media ruined a few people for me. And speaking of authors, Ooh. I mean I was a big Brett Easton Ellis fan before I heard the oh, man's his, his Twitter opinions account. on anything ever. Uh, See, I, 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 I yeah, I write jokes about like buttholes. Yeah, you're yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, like, you're, you're not like attacking, wh- but but yeah. not about other people's buttholes. Yeah, there's okay. a, yeah. just your own. <laughs> there you go. Just my own. You got yeah. the Brett, you got the Brett Easton Ellis thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, he was doing some bad shit on Twitter. Um, uh, yes, I I've heard about it. Um, I was, but pre- but then there's other people like Stephen King who you're like, oh, you're the most delightful human being in the world on yeah. on social media. You're exactly what I want you to be. You're the Stuart Miller of of of, of Twitter authors. That's, He's yes, like, they say that often to Stephen King. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've got I've gotten to meet Neil Gaiman a few times, which was huge for me because he's one of my favorite authors, and like, and we're a fan of his wife. Yeah, Amanda Palmer, of course, and and, it, and like I've gotten to meet uh, quite a few people over the years, but like, in terms of idols, fucking King is right up there for me, and like sure. I don't think I can maintain my shit. It's like Trey Anastasio, Stephen King, like Michael. Palin. When's your birthday again? October. <laughs> <laughs> Look under your chair. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh no! Hey, Stephen King. <laughs> and I don't even think he wants to meet me, and I appreciate that. Like, Why? I, I don't think he cares, man. <laughs> no. Like there's certain, you know, like Trey and Matt, right? You love Trey. I love Trey and Matt, but like they don't want to fucking talk to me, so I almost don't want to ever meet them. You know, you want a good yeah. interaction with these people. I don't think yeah, Stephen King is. Want, sometimes you, want, you don't want to meet your heroes. I don't think yeah. he wants me to geek out about fucking Dark Tower to him, man. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to do <laughs> every day of my life. 
I'm I pretty wanna... sure there's groups for this. Um, have you guys got into a lot of like uh, multi uh, multi book fantasy series, as it were, like Harry Potter or Game of Thrones? I or... have, I've started two, not realizing that they were multi. Which ones? Uh, I I did a Wrinkle in Time. And uh, and I did Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, there's Douglas like, Adams there's like is six, great. There's like six of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, diner, Adam, diner at the End of the Universe. Yeah, there's four, I think. It's only four. Is there four? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's, Guide, Hitchhiker's uh, diner, diner at the, the End. The end. Uh, 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 so Long and Thanks for All the yep. Fish. And I forget. Like, yeah, there's another one well, in there. Well, and a new one came out maybe like six years ago, co-written with the guy who did I was just going to say, it's co-written. It's El- incomplete. Elfon Kohler yeah, it was or inc- It was incomplete yeah. and then finished by someone that. else. Um, um, I was so upset, Douglas though, Adams, when, though, I, is when fantastic. I did that. Like, I didn't realize that they were going to be series. I thought I was just going to start, like, a classic book. And then to find out, oh, no, 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 you guys it doesn't really six end. more books. See, you yeah. hate that? I love that. Uh, and especially I, if it's a good book like that, that really is. I actually right. just introduced my lady friend to that series. And okay. all of a sudden, like, now she's, like, in balls. Well, it's also just because I have OCD and I am a completionist and a collector. So, like, I was like, oh, I'll read the Master and Commander book. And I was like, that was great. Oh, God. Oh, there are 12 more of them? Yeah, no. I went to the store you. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I've never read an Agatha Christie book. I should buy that first 10 of them right now yeah right. yeah exactly right. that's yeah. the way i am it's like i oh i have to read every single thing this person ever i got really into like the last i was gonna read the last of the mohicans i read half of it and then i discovered this is part three of like a five-part series so i stopped and went all the way back like I, you doubled back on yourself so my yeah. introduction to that was hardy boys and there were like 70 of those sure right like 150 i was encyclopedia them. brown i didn't do yeah, either I, I did encyclopedia I did goosebumps brown. i did goosebumps boys a little bit younger See, you're a little, a little bit younger. younger you're a little yeah, younger yeah. Like four than years younger yeah because yeah 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 none of us did the uh what's the female version of the hardy boys nancy drew nancy drew i didn't Look do that either yeah. i did one of those it was uh, fun. but you know encyclopedia brown was cool i, was I like big them. on goosebumps encyclopedia brown was in a boy detective yes yeah. exactly like robin yep <laughs> Actually, that yeah. was another. That was actually another one that my tutor would read to me it's when like I was brown. way too tired. I would do all my school for the day, and I, then I like she would like because they they actually asked you, do you did, did you figure did, it out? So did you figure did, it did out? Did you guys do choose, yeah, your own, choose your own adventure books? Yep, yep, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to always cheat, though. Of course. Oh, okay, everyone did. But did you ever? Stu probably but, didn't. Well, well no, here's no, what I, you do: is you you do your choices, and, and then you, then dead you end. check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you check. You double back because you don't want the book to end. Exactly. Well, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah, no, you figure out what you did. Which wrong, is hysterical because you part. can't read that's it the straight through because it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I love I love a good series. So, like, I got really. Uh, I remember one summer I read all of the Lonesome Dove Saga by Larry McMurtry. I don't know if you guys are. So was that like? Like awesome, <laughs> <laughs> it's like cowboy cowboy stuff, but like really well written. Larry McMurtry is a cool author to me. If we're doing book talk, let's do it. Because yeah, he's written, brother, he's written like forty fucking like western books, right? He did the Barry Bender narratives. It was like ten parts of it, and Lonesome Dove. But he also wrote the screenplays for like Terms of Endearment. And okay. it, it, that's what I mean. It seems like it's pretty tender. Uh, and, and, the kind and of like work that he last does. Last picture show. You know what that's I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. tender. He's good at yeah. like emotions, McMurtry. I, I like Larry McMurtry. That's a guy who like. I would forget I'm such a Larry McMurtry fan because I'm not a Western guy, you know? Sure. But I've sure. read most of his shit. I, that's the same with me and Berenstein Bears. I've read all of the Berenstein, Berenstein. Bears. I believe it's Berenstein. Oh, is it really? Is it's it, Berenstein. we got three different... All right, yeah, there Berenstein you go. Steen, and Berenstein. Stein, Stein. <laughs> Do you not... Oh, he definitely doesn't know. Should we explain the Mandelaverse to Stu in another episode? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. we should. Yeah, because he definitely has no idea what we're no, talking about. Honestly, that's almost a whole episode. <laughs> yeah, we should do a Mandela verse episode. <laughs> honestly, we'll all put on like evil mustaches. I'm down. I'm yeah. down. I don't even need for that. I'll shave my mustache. There you go. That's exactly. my version of an evil mustache. <laughs> and we'll all just I shave it. Yeah, let's do an alternate universe one. Uh, I'm in. Um, I'm big into like series. So like, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, sure, but like Dark Tower. By Stephen King, there's seven books, and it's one of my favorite series of all time. No, oh, stop it. All right, uh, 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 you know, um, I really love the His Dark Materials books. Do you know what that is? I don't. Nope. That was that movie, The Golden Compass, with oh, uh, sure, Nicole sure. Kidman. So that's a that's from a series called His Dark Materials. And here's a pitch on that: it's a it's a book for kids, right? It's, it exists in a world where like people have magic, and like if you have magic, you have like a little animal called like a daemon that like is by your side at all times. It can like talk and shit. A navi, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, hey. Nice. Like a fa- a fa- listen, a famili- listen, listen. A witch is familiar. A witch is familiar. It would be a good, a better way yeah. to put it, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm cool with this, and I like that movie enough, and like, yeah, it's a weird fantasy thing, and people recommend it. And then you get, I'm not going to spoil the whole series, but then you get to the end of the first book, and it's like, 
a 13 year old girl named Lyra and like this little boy. And they're like, oh, so we know what we have to do now. We have to kill God. So that book is banned by all the churches because it's an atheist young adult novel series. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. About a, a book where sci- a universe where science and religion are at odds and science but, is the clear good guy. But, but gotcha. Dante's Inferno was totally fine. Like, you know, yeah, I love Dante's Inferno. Yeah. I, prefer, um, I prefer Purgatorio. <laughs> okay, check, okay, check this out. What, what's like the worst like, book you've read? I would stop reading it probably. Yeah, okay. Oh, listen, you don't even have to give names, even. Like, but I, I'm just saying. You, you know what? I there was one book that I read that I, I thought it was beautifully written, but I was like, just every ounce of it made me hate it. Which was that? Which was Mein Kampf. No, <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> uh, uh, Lolita. Sure, but yeah, like, it's, I, it's just sick. It's man. a little creepy. It's really disgusting, and like I got through hey, it. Hey, don't judge people. I got through it, <laughs> and I don't literally judge pedophiles. I, I, I read the last page. I picked the book up, and I like threw it against you the dirty. wall. You felt dirty. I was like, this is kind of how I felt with Bukowski. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it is. Uh, I, I won't say it's the worst books ever, but I will say one. Uh, and you know what? Maybe this will be inspiration for him to, to get his shit together if he hears it. But one of the people who went from being one of my favorite authors on the planet to like the last five books I read of him were just like fucking gross and stupid is Chuck Palahniuk, who, who okay. did like uh, really? fight, fight Club. Yeah. yeah. He kind of just it became more gross out and more gross out. I mean, and that was the element he seemed to think that his audience was responding to was how like r- much rape and like disgusting stuff right, he put in right. them. So by the time I got to his last few Wait, books. So you don't like rape? It, uh, not for the sake of shocking me, oh, okay. which I feel like he was trying to do at the end. But you like rape in other contexts? Uh, no, Matt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How much fucking editing work do you want me to do? Oh, God. You know what? New rule. Matt's allowed to say rape. You gotta <laughs> earn it. You gotta there earn you go. it. There you go. Um, no, but just that's a guy who like I thought had total promise, like Fight sure. Club and, and Survivor and Invisible Monsters, and then just kind of devolved into like a shock I guess sure. shock, shock authoring, in my shock, opinion. Jock. Now, yeah. you and I talk about another author a lot that you've gone way down the rabbit hole with. I haven't quite yet, but uh, which is Anne Rice. Yeah, totally. Um, when, only... we were, when we were in New Orleans, I went to her fucking house. I went to visit the Mayflower Mansion. Oh, did you? To say hi to my Fantastic. ladies. Yeah, yeah. How'd Fantastic. that go? It was great. We stood outside of it. Yeah, and, then yeah. another and, couple, then? and then another tourist couple came up, and they pointed at it, and I was like, oh, great. We're at the right one. Yeah. <laughs> and then my mom right. my mom who got me into Anne Rice funnily enough I posted a picture on Instagram and I wrote here at the Mayflower Mansion and my mom texted me and she's like that reminds me of Anne Rice's house <laughs> yeah. I was like wow. you got good eye you know that sounds like a really fulfilling uh, trip yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I went to Wrestlemania and Anne Rice's old house <laughs> yeah you nailed it I think you nailed it bro Um, but uh, yeah man yeah. Uh, I love like the vampire books, but I specifically like like the witching hour books are my favorite. Right, uh, yeah. right. Yeah, Anne I Rice only got as far as Queen of the Damned. Um, mm. She's gotten a little. And again, the woman's been pumping out books for like thirty fucking years, so like Law of Diminishing Returns a little bit. Yeah, yeah. they're a little wonky. <laughs> In the latest with stat book, he went to Atlantis. Okay. Wow. He there didn't just go. jump the shark. He jumped like the fucking lost <laughs> he jumped, continent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he jumped the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I get, I get what we're doing here. But I'll, I'll check in on Anne Rice every night. There are certain authors like if there's a new book out, I'll read. Sure. Um, sure. Did you guys ever uh, see the movie The Relic? No. About the monster in the Museum of Natural History in New York? I feel like I did, then I forgot. Tom Sizemore. I it. Uh, um, so the guys who wrote that are uh, Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child, and they've written like 30 fucking books over the years. I've read every one. So there's certain authors, like, if there's a new of his... Write, there's certain authors that write The Relic? Yeah, and the sequel, Relic Query. <laughs> yeah. No, there's certain authors... That wasn't Night at the Museum? Uh, it was based on, <laughs> Night at the Museum was based on The Relic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Much better. Uh, <laughs> there are certain authors, I will read whatever they write. You know, sure. uh, A new one for me is Joe Hill, who's uh, Stephen King's son, actually. He's okay. written like six novels in the last few years, and they're fucking awesome. Uh, most recently, a book called The Fireman, which is so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to, to Joseph Helion Hill. Yeah. The other cool uh, thing wh- about why is his last name not King? You'll why? Dig, you'll dig so, no, I do. Name. I do actually. Oh, I, you do, know I, the story. I, I, I do know the story, but no, do you, 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 tell, I don't. you tell it. So yeah. he published his first two books without anyone knowing he was Stephen King's son, and they both got on the bestsellers list. There you go. So he wanted to prove that he could do this could without, do without, his, without dad. his dad's and, name. Yeah. And once he did that, him and his dad like started collaborating on short stories and shit. It's, it's fucking awesome. Awesome. Like the awesome. pass is torched. The pass is torched. The pass is torched. Uh, the torch is passed. No, they're, they're, they're torching their pass in a really satisfying way for me. And the fact that like my favorite author of all time, son, is now in my also top 
t- you know, 20 favorite authors of all They're time. like, nice, another 30 years of this. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, totally. Yeah, this will work for me. Yeah, keep that more, font more, going. More of you not believing in me, Dad. Like, <laughs> 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 more of me dissing myself from you. <laughs> um, are, there any, are there any authors you flat out hate? Like, they don't like okay, to listen, read? Okay, listen, I'm not a fan of the Brontes. Okay. I can't. I, I just, I'm not. I just can't. We, we've talked about that. I'm not a fan of that entire genre and period. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea who you're. Oh, 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 oh uh, uh, Withering Heights. Charlotte yeah, Bronte yeah, or Jane and, Austen. Yeah. yeah. Any of that kind of stuff, honestly, it doesn't. It, it Sense and sensibility doesn't do it for me. Yeah. It's like, okay, what's the opposite of tickling your balls? <laughs> Ripping, <laughs> scratching your balls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like biting. No, because like I enjoy gnaw- scratching. Gnawing on your neck? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, they're talking about like a time that like just. It was well, interesting it, to me. Right. It doesn't affect me. It's what I said, yeah. and, and uh, we got a shout out from Rose Williams, we know who is British, because I was like, yo, the time in England where everyone was just like fancy and rode horses and shit, like doesn't do it for me. But Dickens. Where they're like living in basements and everyone's selling their body parts for like moldy bread. Bring that shit on. See, I was going to say Some Dickens chauvinist. is actually one that I'm not really that into, which kind of sucks if I'm going to put myself through reading every classic novel. Because mm-hmm. what would be the one for Dickens? Because well, Dickens is so I read, the, the Tale the, of Two Cities. No, the only one that I've read by Dickens was David Copperfield. And I was like, I got done with it and I was like, I really don't want to read anything else that he's read. No, not because it's depressing. It's because dense. It's just so dense, and you get through it, and you're just like, yeah. I was That's like, some of that Harry Dude, Miller that I was talking you said about. This sure. or, Dostoevsky. Times, or Dostoevsky, or Dostoevsky, it's exactly. Like, you said this yeah. ten times in ten different ways. Get on with it. Get on with I think it. All of my favorite this, authors are. No, Ramblers. I know what the lamp looks like. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whereas then you get Hemingway is the polar opposite of that. Yeah, right? he yes. barely like and touches you're like, on no, it. No, say what the thing looked like. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> tell me about the lamp. I I married woman. She is a woman. She has a woman face. And you're like, what's her name? Wait, what's your name? What's your name? See, what I don't even think my wife said My woman. wife died. <laughs> yeah. I was married, you know. And you're like, no, we didn't. No, no I didn't know that. know that. Tell me about your wife. God damn. My granddaughters will appear in Woody Allen movies, or at least one of them. <laughs> no, but I mean, the, in, in the writing from that time, Everybody was, you know, people weren't writing in books. They were or writing for books. They were writing magazines. You know, they were writing Literary for magazines. magazines. Little articles. And they were Cere- getting cereal- paid by the cereal- word. Serialized. And it's like, it's so obvious that they're getting paid by the okay, word. Okay, like, guys, I got a contest out. for us. Let's right. let's do a thing. We all sit around. We write by the word. All right. <laughs> I will pay you a uh, uh, five cents per letter. Per, oh, per letter. Per letter. Right. Per letter. And whoever writes the most letters... <laughs> In actual words, like you guys can't cheat. In a time, in a time yes, within one hour, who can write the next great American novel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> ba- baby shoes worn too many times. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> got it. Nailed it. Yeah, you can't just go like A E E O T V. You know, like, no, you have to uh, write real speaking words. Speaking of uh, great, no, no. So you didn't answer my oh. question. Are we doing this? No, probably no. not. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's uh, too fine. much work. All right, yeah, fine. Yeah. it's a lot of work. We actually, also have right. real jobs we're like <laughs> neglecting for bunny ears. And shit. It's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Our editor Sean Pasquale would fucking kill you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, no, guys, no, no, no. Take some no, time out of your work day and do a bullshit. No, here's here's how we do it. We 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 get him to do it too. <laughs> we get him to do it with okay, us. We want See, the company to live. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, if he's yeah. doing it, now we, we don't and, have anybody and, running And Nicola Word, come on. Man. What <laughs> about the bard? Where do we fall on him? The bard? Oh, good the, old Willie Shakes. Good old Willie Shakes. Shakes. Yeah. Snake's beard? Yeah, Willie Willy Shakes. I, I mean, I... I I think he actually has some talent. I think he shows promise, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we should give him a a, yeah. a one book deal. What are your yeah. go- what's, what's, where, what's your favorite? Bright future, bright future. Uh, I got, have you read much Shakespeare, boys? I have. I would say Hamlet. School, and it's yeah. Such a, it's such a cop out, but like I think Hamlet's just a great, great play. I like uh, as good as it gets. Uh, no, it's good as it gets. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> the, the Jack no. Nicholson movie. No, no, <laughs> that is a great <laughs> movie in Max defense. Uh, 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 no, no, hold I on. think that's James L. Brooks. <laughs> no, no, it's good as it gets. Uh, 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 as you like it, as you like it. Thank you. I'm, I'm not. I'm close. I'm way <laughs> off, but I'm close. <laughs> I like about Schmid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that lands nice. That uh, was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, uh, but I like that one because it has cross-dressing. I'm a Macbeth boy because so, it's so cursed. most of them. 
Yeah, but no, 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 this one actually involves cross-dressing no, in, plot. in the plot. Oh, okay. I mean, also, I like King doesn't Lear, Twelfth but... Night have that as well? There are a few of them that also involve cross-dressing within the plots. I mean, all the comedies... So, so does as good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> I think all of the comedies, Shakespeare was like, it's either a tragedy or a guy's wearing a lady dress. <laughs> and that's And that's fucking funny. <laughs> hey, man, I would call that a comedy. Um <laughs> I'm gonna it's make, timeless. I'm gonna make a Beth boy because you got like witches. You got like sure. the like, play. The actual play itself is cursed. Yep. What, how do yep. you feel about Macduff? Uh, hey man, no no man of woman born, right? Yeah, there you go. See, there you go. Uh, I like Macduff. I also uh, I, I honestly <laughs> love Macbeth. That was the first time where I was like, oh, Shakespeare isn't boring. It's fucking dope. Yeah. Well, see, I liked it more when it was explained to me. Right. More like I would watch a documentary about it than actually reading it, to be completely honest. It's not pretty cool. It's basically like the witch. Or you had Miss Fitz explain it to you. I mean, one way or the other. No. It's like if you don't, if you don't I had know. Miss Cusack back if, then. Shout out to Miss Cusack. Here's the stoner version of Macbeth if you don't know it. There's like these witches, and they're basically like, here's all this shit that's about to happen. And then Macbeth comes, and, he, and they're like, yo, this shit's about to happen. And he's like, no, it won't. And then it all happens. And then the witches are like, told you so. <laughs> Macbeth. And end scene. Yeah. And then you can't say it. You can't say it in a theater where people die. That's the curse of Macbeth. That is. That is. Um, I want. Uh, do you, you know? Ever, do you know what it's actually based on? Uh, I don't want to almost give it away because I wrote a movie called "Fuck You Shakespeare" about this. But uh, do you know why you're not supposed to say Macbeth in theaters? I don't. Uh, so the actual <laughs> witch is the witch's incantation in Macbeth, like the double double toil and trouble. Yep. Um, is he didn't write that? He took it from an actual he- Hecate like ch- witch prayer. He took it from like you know an ancient kind of book. So people are saying when, when you see them show Macbeth, they're actually invoking that 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 witch or that demon. They're like inside the text of Macbeth is an actual, unintentional on his end, but like prayer Curse. to the god Hecate. You know, go on, okay. go on, Hecate or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that's so that's not why you're, it's it's unlucky because you're actually invoking like a fucking demon sort of you know. Did they? I've actually heard that that yeah. Macbeth is actually not unlucky. Yeah, place that's why you're not, to supposed, to, you're not supposed to. The, yeah. So when they stage it, they never call it Macbeth. They call it the Scottish play. Right. Like you're literally not allowed to say the word Macbeth in a theater of any sort. Yes, that that is actually yeah. a thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Were you the one who taught us what break legs means? Break a leg? Yeah. I mean, probably. Do you know? Like, <laughs> see, so that's another actor superstition. You don't like. I have friends who are actors. If they go on an audition, you say, "Hey, uh, you don't say good luck. You say break you a say leg. Break you say break leg. a leg." Yeah. Okay, so there's a little like a turn style. There's a you know there's a you know wheel that they pull the curtain up with. Right. So like you finish a show, they drop the curtain, shabang and bang, uh, and then they lift it up and you do your bows. You don't and, know this though. And then they What's that? and you then they and then they drop the curtain again. Right. And then if they want a you know another another ovation. Yeah. Yes. You know. And so boom, you do it again. And so the idea is that they pull the curtain closed and open so much that the rope breaks. It actually breaks right. the leg of the curtain. Right. The leg of the curtain. And then boom. Like, so that's why they say break a leg. Yeah. While I found that very informative, you know I majored in theater, right? <laughs> like, what'd, you, what'd you do with it? I, 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 I tried. Have you, have you done theater? Did they, teach you, the podcast? did they teach you that in theater college? Where they're like, all right, first Did you know this one? I, I did. I I I haven't heard that in a while, but yes, I okay, did know there that. You go. It's, it's see, been about see, 20 so years. Matt was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. Only I learned it. Too. I know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I wasn't in the theater. <laughs> Not everyone was in uh, Mommy Dearest in the West End or whatever. What was your show called? Madame Melville. Madame oh, Melville. Go. Yeah, Daddy Dearest in the West in... End. Yes, that, that's that's what it was called. <laughs> Daddy Dearest, Daddy Dearest and in the, the West, West End. End. Yeah. And the West End boys. Um great. I'm writing a short story now called Daddy Dearest <laughs> in the West End. Uh speaking of shorts, were you guys on um uh I loved uh 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 Kurt Vonnegut. I was a big Vonnegut guy. Okay. You know, I haven't gotten into him I yet. I feel like you would dig that. I'm using the word yet yeah. because I uh, everything I know about him and what like I want to be involved. Uh, yeah, I feel like you would want in on that team. Yeah, are you kidding me? Like he had a real j- jumping around sense time, of humor. jumping around time and space, and just involving yeah. aliens and weird language. Every book like, was just it a, all. It all. Look, like, yeah, the, it it, tick, it tickles me fancy. They all just have a real weird twist on. He had a real dark 
kind of sense of humor, which I appreciate. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read I, I read Slaughterhouse <laughs> Five this year actually. Did you? Yeah. That was your first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my first. It's and good. and I thought it was great. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> they're really. Hey, like, what do you think of it? Speak opposite of dense. They're like the most approachable, easy to read books ever. Yeah, it. You know, absolutely. Like big sent like big letters and like there's the paragraphs are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Um, they're, they're, they're short little baby ones. Uh, I really liked a lot of Hemingway's short stories. I love Hemingway, um, Not dude. to bring it back into your yeah. wheelhouse, but I mean, or, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, why yeah. not. No, but, no. I brought it. I was, I yeah, brought up Hemingway. Like, and, uh, yeah, we all love Indian Hemingway. Indian Summer, I think, is one of them. Um, the End of Something I really liked when I was younger. Uh, and and a lot of Edgar Allan Poe short stories. Uh, well, that's... See, you're, the Telltale see, you're, you're, Heart. Look, yeah, and, look, listen, Nick, yeah, you're really stroking Matt right now. I know. I mean, like, yeah, no, you're, well, hitting, uh, you're hitting his wheelhouse. Here's some, here's some Poe stuff like. for you. Everyone thinks of, like, The Raven, right? Well, like, he wrote a bunch of poems, right? But but it's the Once short... Upon the mid Jury. Yeah. yeah, as I pondered weak and weary mm-hmm. over a quaint and curious volume of Forgotten Lore. <laughs> um, uh, Vine? Sir, quoth I, or <laughs> madam, <laughs> your I forgiveness I implore... Yeah. Sir or madam. <laughs> um, uh, but the fact is, I was napping when so gently you came rapping. Rapping at my chamber door. Rapping at my chamber door that I was scarcely sure I heard you. Here is it I a bit of what, what is the line? Is it a bit of what? He thinks Darkness it's food there, from more. No, he thinks it's food in his stomach from last night. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah uh, so he also, other than uh, being like the most successful American like fucking author of. of well, they say he's the first successful American author. He also okay. invented. Uh, someone who had like an impact that was American born shout gotcha. out just then just lived in America he also invented the concept of a detective there were no detectives before him uh, okay Batman uh, what about Batman Batman's uh, a scientist murder uh, murder on the room <laughs> detective m- scientist murder on the murder room morgue, morgue. Uh, Dalpine yep. was the first detective it predates Sherlock Holmes it predates uh, uh, you know what I mean when when did uh, so I'm gonna answer my Batman when question, did Poe okay. live <laughs> I like, uh, I, 18 say that, 18 was I world. knew that part I just didn't know when 18, besides 18 eight. was he before Mark Twain who no, contemporary uh, contemporary Edgar Allan Poe contemporary yeah because okay. uh, I think yeah I think Poe actually might even no excuse me Poe died in 1849 he's one generation before Twain I was about okay you got it. <laughs> no, I was about to say that, and then, then I was about to say I, I, I was about to say that, and then uh, no, Poe died so in I stopped saying those words. And the interesting, so not only did he detect, invent the detective genre and all that shit, right? The other thing was he didn't like horror shit, right? So like he was trying for years to get published with like his fucking sentimental poems, right? And finally, it, it would be the uh, the mo- the modern equivalent of a dude doing like a sci-fi movie or something just to. He was like, oh, this is the shit that sells. I'm just going to do this. But his intention, he wasn't like a macabre, dreary right, guy. Right. The end of his life is super fucking weird. Do you know the circumstances of his death? Involved a train, and then he went home. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle Lee something. It had something to do with his cousin. I'm pretty no, sure it was a cousin that he married. He like was at a bar, and then he disappeared, and then like three days later they found him, and he was like near a state of total death, and his body was like completely beaten and black and blue, and like no one knows what happened to him in those last like two days of his life, basically. I blame Hemingway. Um, never made a single dollar while he was alive, really. Like, yeah, yeah, huh. I knew that one. Wasn't famous at all till he till he died. That one, I thought, I thought, didn't like little kids used to follow him and and you know do like shout the raven at him or or, or, or shout never at him more. or something. Yeah, or something well, like it was around, right? But he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't like he wasn't beloved until right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. right. He's like a, it was. It was like Stephen King. I mean, Stephen King to this day, like. Is probably the most prolific American author. I think he's written like fifty fucking novels or something, and he's certainly the most best-selling American author uh, uh, of of living authors. I think he does actually hold the record, but will yeah. never get the respect of a you know, Poe quote or unquote something. fancy American author, a Hemingway. Uh, or a, you know, I mean, the thing is that Poe again, like he was died, right, but he he died before his time. And it was like, and he eventually found his like. But you he know, was his writing voice. pop. He was writing pop fiction, just like Stephen King is. Poe, I know. Poe was writing the, what was and, the fiction that was popular and, at the day. So was Dickens. So was. And what I'm saying is that they didn't find their fame sure. until after until they were after. dead. Yeah, people. So even Stephen though King, King is totally like you know alive as far as we know. <laughs> um, uh, I think he's doing like, well. No, I think, his, I think, his fame might es- escalate. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. He, he certainly fam- he might be a Poe. He might well, be a that. I think I think the respect for his actual talent will increase over the years, as opposed to like he's the biggest writer ever. I have love for him. Right. I think he's actually a cool Gr- dude. Grisham's a huge giant, one of the best selling authors of all time. Mm-hmm. 
eh, he's okay. It's not my <laughs> it's not my favorite thing, right? Like right, so right. but but King specifically I think is like an incredibly talented writer. Sure. Um sure. yeah, yeah. We, and we, prolific. We yeah. should talk to Stephen King if we can. <laughs> hey Stephen King. Catch hashtag him at a Boston King. You Stephen know he's King. listening. You know you know Stephen King's listening to Bunny Ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. No, we'll, 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 Straight we'll, chilling. We'll do um, it. Uh, we'll, I mean, we'll go all the way to Bangor, Maine for you. Uh, all right. You wrote a book. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, I did it. Would you recommend <laughs> it? No, I mean, because like, I'll be honest, I I didn't know you wrote a book until I until the last like look, six months or so. Yeah, actually, technically, you guys are sitting next to a best-selling author. There you also. go. Like, yeah, like I didn't just write a book. Actually, it, it did okay. Uh, um, no, 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 no. Actually, I don't mean that in a prideful kind of way. Actually, it's an eye rolling kind of oh, way. Of course, where it's like a, I, I'm completely unworthy. So, what of is is it, is it called? Junior by Macaulay it's Culkin. Ca- it's called Junior. Yeah, by Macaulay Culkin. Uh, um, it really is like just like chunks of a journal kind of thing that was kind of just typed up. Uh, I wrote it over the course of like I look. I kissed a girl. I wrote a book about it in about two or three weeks, and then I published it. Like it was pretty it's much fictional, that quick. or is it? Yes, yeah. I mean, yes, it is mostly fictional, and it's a series of short stories and essays and dirty little poems and sayings that are all kind of put together in a haphazard kind of way. Um, I like it. I mean, it's it's, but it's also a very very it's it's very juvenile. So whenever like you know people like like it or people bring it up, I like get blushy or weird about it <laughs> because it's like yeah, like people point out like a, a weird kind of personal thing that you did. Like you know, right. I, I am super proud of it, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the bee's knees or nothing like that. Is so. it available on stuff? Can like people get it on the like, Amazon? Yeah, I mean Google it, kids. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, no, seriously, yeah. I, I, yeah. Doubt, I doubt it's in print or anything like that. But like you know, you can always find a copy that's like you know not very expensive. Like, what, you know. what were you gonna say about Junior? Oh, I was just gonna say uh, Mac mentioned that he is that that we were in the presence of a best-selling author. I would also like to point out that you both are both in the presence of someone who is mentioned in a best-selling book. Oh, yeah. Which book, which book was that? <laughs> Junior. Yeah, Stu, right. Stu's, Stu's in the... Uh, there's, a, there's a dedication and oh, nice. at the end, and it's four and not four. And Stu, I made the four list. Yeah, so Stu Miller, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, so he's technically in like the one and a half page list of people who it's for. Uh, I don't want to brag, but I mentioned multiple times in Silent Bob Speaks, so... Wow, New York Times bestsellers list as well, buddy. <laughs> See, there you go. There you Looks go. like you got some company in this room of being a fucking shout out in a book by your famous friend. Hey, hey, guys, guys, I have an idea. Hit me. We have a book, like, you know, episode. Let's all write a book right now. I thought you just came up with that idea. No, no. Let's, <laughs> no, we'll, 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 we'll as, write it together. As, as soon as we say goodbye to the audience, shebang a bang. We'll, we'll write, write a book. We'll write a book. Do you want to make it one of those books where, like, you know, you write one word, then you write the next word, then I'll write the all next right. word. All right, exquisite corpse. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean, if you're listening, I'm giving us so much work right now. <laughs> Bunny ears. Boys, do you remember when The Daily Show put out their textbook? Yes. yes. Of course. Let's do a Bunny Ears book like that for okay. real and sell it on BunnyEars.com, where I should also mention we have merchandise for sale, which we never, sure. ever, ever talk about. And everyone gets yeah, mad check at, it out. Everyone gets mad at us. Go to BunnyEars.com, check out our merch. Uh, yeah, we should wrap up. So while you're yeah. at BunnyEars.com. That's why I was suggesting we write a book as oh, soon as we're off. That's, that's sweet. That, that was the segue, dude. I thought you wanted to talk for another half hour. Uh, while you're at BunnyEars.com, while you're waiting for our book, uh, check out all of our daily articles and all the merch and the funny things over there. Uh, I am on the interwebs at uh, Camel Toad. Oh, I forgot to say in the last show. This show is on uh, the interwebs. We're on Twitter at Bunny Ears Pod and Instagram at Bunny Ears Podcast. Stu, where you at? Uh, I can be found on Instagram and on Twitter at uh, Suave Adventure. Yep, he Col- certainly is. Yep. Col- oh, it's my turn. Yeah. Col- Col- oh yeah, I'm I'm at a cred- at Shoo. In- at incrediblecolk dot com oh, oh and at Colkamania dot com dot coms. Uh, uh, there you go, in, in Twitter and Instagram in that order. And we've been saying our phone number wrong because everyone's an asshole. It's 845. That's what I said. That's what oh, we said. Never mind, I'm the asshole. 845. <laughs> eight, I have dyslexia with that number. 845 Easy E Hoax. Call us at 845 Easy E Hoax. Leave a voicemail. Buy a shirt. Send us some love letters. Oh, yeah, bunnyearspot at gmail.com. We probably won't respond, but we will read it. But yeah, and laugh at you. we read stuff and we do things. We read everything. We're very we busy. like reading. We're writing a book. We're, yeah. we're very busy. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> busy. We're writing books. Um, and and while we're off to go do that, uh, what do we what do we tell them, Colky? Uh, try not to suck too many dicks, and if you do, send pics or write a book about it. Write a book about the dicks. <laughs> right.
wanted. Find me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. Find me. Hello, Matt and Macaulay Culkin. Um, you know, last week we heard a little bit of my boy. But you keep him in the background, and everybody knows nobody can keep baby in a corner. So I haven't listened to today's podcast. It's Wednesday. But I'm just hoping that next week or after the podcast today, I can scream to the hills. Stop! Suck some dick. Bye. Matt, Matt. It's Pat. I know it rhymes. Quit fucking bringing it up. Listen, dude, the last, like, two or three podcasts, my shit hasn't been on the end of the shit. And it's getting real fucking annoying. So this this is the last time, last fucking time, or I'm going to find Devin Sawa's podcast and pimp the shit out of it. All right. Fuck you guys. Suck some dick. Hey, it's Caleb from Jacksonville again. I had to walk out of my office because there isn't shit to do at Mad Writer's Block. And all I want to do is take a shit on the rug in my office and walk out. But I haven't done it yet. So calling to let you guys know, you know, close to that edge. And uh, talk to you later. Bye. A Bunny Ears LLC production. You are freaking lumberjack!